Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. We do this every single year right around the middle of August. I go out and I make some crazy playoff predictions. They're only crazy because they're never accurate and they're always a wild thing. It's pretty much impossible to predict how this is exactly going to go down the stretch of the season. But we got about six, six and a half weeks left of the season. The Friday games are just about to kick off for the weekend. So this video might come out after those games are over, but they're not quite started yet because it takes a couple hours to go through. But guys, we do this, we do the power rankings again coming up this Sunday and um, probably a couple more fun videos throughout the rest of the season. So guys, if you are new, like and subscribe to the channel. It is helping a lot. We are looking to get to 1500 by the end of the season. I think it's very doable, about 200, 250 away by the end of this video. And if you smash that subscribe button, you do get a chance to win a hat when we do hit that target. But guys, other than that, we're gonna jump into it. We did one of these back in June. And mind you, there's going to be some teams that I did even predict going to the distance a little bit in the AL and the NL that aren't even in the hunt anymore, it feels like. So it's going to be interesting. In the hunt is technically only a couple of teams. I try to be a little bit and cut some off. And some teams that weren't even in the hunt when I did the video in June are now playoff teams. So it does go and show how much... It does change throughout, but uh, with about six weeks left, let's see what I can do when it comes to predictions. It's always one of my fun, most popular videos at this point of the season. Number one, I think, is pretty much the biggest lock. I say lock because nothing is a lock on this board, but I do have the New York Yankees being the number one seed in the American League. And we always start with the American League when we do these videos, by the way. But the New York Yankees, they do have... I think they are tied exactly with Baltimore coming into this weekend. Maybe half game up they were at least. I think Baltimore won yesterday, so it did eliminate that. So I think they are tied. But when I looked at, I think I looked at about 15, 16 different teams when preparing for this video. I believe that the New York Yankees do have the best schedule out of all those teams going forward. So that is a big boost. I know they're not necessarily first right now in the division, but six and a half weeks. They play a lot of the bottom teams throughout. I do think, given that, they have Judge. Soto, the only two guys that are absolutely mashing the on-base percentage. I think they're the only two guys above 400 in the entire MLB. Those kind of things do play into this, and I think the Yankees are the team to catch when it comes to the number one seed. Then we get to the number two seed, and I went back and forth on a couple of teams, but I think at the end of the day, I went a little bit with the safe pick maybe, but I do have the Cleveland Guardians coming in at the number two. I know the Central is probably the most colluded convoluted division on the board we'll get to the central on the other side that'll be a little interesting as well but the guardians have gone on a five game winning streak win streak coming into today and i think that helped them they're now four games up in the division did have a little bit of concern they had a little bit of an intense series with minnesota last week and that again is a little bit of a concern when it comes to the central the royals the guardians and the twins are the three teams that we're going to talk about um and the guardians they have a lot of these games against each other. And that goes for the Twins, that goes for the Royals. It's really going to come down to that. But the four-game lead, as well as I do think they have the better bullpen, they probably have the better depth in terms of pitching, and the bats seem to be a little bit stronger, and at least in the MVP style of ways, I do think they have those little bit of an edge over the other two teams. So I do give the Guardians that number two seed, although I would not debate too heavily that it could go to another team. So now when we start talking about the MLB playoffs, the number three seed isn't necessarily the team that is the highest ranked in the standings. It always goes to the division leader, whoever isn't in the first two round bye. And in this case, that comes to the American League West. And really, I think we all know it comes down to two teams. And for me, I, I am giving a little bit of the edge to the Houston Astros in this department. I do like the Astros. I do think they do have a strong lineup, one through nine, pretty much. The rotation has been an issue, of course, dealing with injuries all season long. But the Astros did make some trades at the trade deadline. Kikuchi, since coming in there, has made a big difference, and he is going to be a solid part of this team going into the playoffs and down the stretch. When you talk about the Astros, they have battled back from one of the worst starts, I think, in a decade for this team. The, they've closed a gap, which was double digits in this division over Seattle. And I do think just doing that, they're going to be able to build it. It could come down to either way. But right now, I do think the Astros are the team to walk 
away from this division. Now, we start looking at some other teams on this board, and we have to start making some cuts in the AL. There's probably about eight teams overall, so that means we're going to have two people that aren't quite going to get there. And for me, I didn't feel great about this, but I do have Boston being one of those teams that isn't quite going to make it into the playoffs. Boston, if you watched my video back in June, I actually predicted them being the number six seed uh, and being able to walk their way to the World Series. I actually predicted them going all the way to the World Series based off just how it matched up and all that fun stuff. But now it's a little bit different. I think looking at their schedule, they have about 10 games total against maybe 14 games against Toronto and Tampa Bay. While in reality, they should be able to pick up some big wins in there. I, I am concerned whether they match up like, super well against this team. I think those 14 games could potentially be 500 baseball for Boston. And that's just going to set them behind the pace and what they need to do in order to keep pace with all these other teams. And I just, looking at all the other teams, I just don't see how they match up as well with some of these other teams. Boston has had a great season. It's one of those seasons that they came in not expecting to probably be where they are. And they're building off of it. And they're going to build this young team going forward. So they got to be super pumped. But right now I do have them missing the playoffs. So let's move on to number four seed. And this is going to be the team that has the best record in the wild card. So we're looking at a few different teams here. Could go a lot of different ways, and then maybe this will come as a shock for some people, but I do have the Minnesota Twins in there. A lot of central games coming up for them, which does mean Detroit, does mean the White Sox, so they are going to pick up some wins there. And as well, they're going to be playing some competitive games in their own division against the Guardians, as well as the Royals, who we'll talk about in a second. Really, we've seen a team in the Twins make some progress over the entire season. They're one of the teams that technically has a little bit of momentum going up. They had a losing streak at the beginning of the season, a winning streak, a losing streak, a winning streak. But now it's been a little bit more consistent in terms of winning. And when it comes to that time down to it, I do think it is something they've built on. And they have been a team that I really predicted to win this Central to begin with. So I think they are going to compete. They might even take the number two seed. But right now I do have them at number four. And that leaves us to number five. And it's a little bit of a drop probably from what I predicted earlier in the season. But I don't I do think they are gonna get there. And it's their their record over the past 60 games or so has been basically 500. I looked over their schedule for the rest of the season. It's a pretty tough schedule. We're gonna see them play the Dodgers, we're gonna see them play the Astros, we're going to see them play the Yankees to close out the season. There are a lot of top tier teams along the way. So 500 the rest of the way is not out of the question for the Baltimore Orioles. I talk about it all the time in my power rankings that the Orioles have some pitching issues and it's starting to show up some concern. We do see time to time they have Corbin Burns, of course, and Zach Evelyn has been quite a big deal since joining this team, making up some aspect. But then we see the bullpen blow games too, which is concerning. But at the same time, this offense is not one to squint your eyes at. They are pretty consistently putting up some runs. So I think for them to fall out of playoff contention, probably out of the question. But I think number five on the road is going to be a true test for this team. Last year, we saw them get a first round by and then they got swept by the Strohs. So maybe this is what we need for the, for the Orioles to make a little bit of a step forward. So then we get down to two teams and I'm just going to throw them both up there because it could go either way. Honestly, it could go very much either way and when I kind of start looking at the schedules I do think Seattle has a fairly easy schedule Kansas City's isn't so bad either they both kind of match uh, and at, right now the Royals have a little bit of a buffer in terms of the wild card race but I do think Seattle is the better team if they could just figure out how to turn their quality starts into some big wins and I think they're going to I think they are going to sort it out which this is going to set up a pretty intense series if it happens maybe it's just a little bit of me hoping that it happens but at the same time I do think the Royals they have a very much good shot of getting in there and this is just it's it's sad all these teams really if they're over in the National League are making the playoffs based on how they're playing based on their record uh, but in this case we're going to see some teams get out and the AL just seems to be that stacked side of the bracket this year and that happens every year there's always a team there's always a side that is a little bit more stacked in terms of depth and there's another team that usually has one team that's going away with it. But right now, this season, we don't really have anyone walking away with it. And this is how I kind of see the playoffs shaping up. And then it, then it gets super interesting, right? Because then we got to start predicting who's going to win. So three and six, whoever wins that one is going to go on to play the Guardians. The same on the other side, four versus five goes on to play the Yankees. 
what are you gonna do? I think in this case, it's, let's stick with the easiest one to pick, I think. I think it's gonna be Baltimore, and this is where their strength is gonna come into fashion. They're in a three game series. It's a best of three in that first round wild card. Sure, Minnesota's gonna get the home field advantage. Sure, they had that same situation last year that beat the Jays out in that exact same boat. But Baltimore, I think when you get to send out your aces, you're gonna have Corbin Burns for game one. That's going to be a big deal. Of course, Minnesota on the other side does have some aces of their own. But I think that's what's holding Baltimore back in terms of longevity of the season, longevity of possibly the playoffs as well. And that's going to be not as much to a detriment at this point. And I think they're going to be able to battle through it. Then we get to number three. And these guys have they've battled, right? They've battled all season. They've battled. They've been division rivals forever. I do think, though, at the end of the day, Seattle, their rotation has been great. Quality starts, tops of the league, but they just do not get the run support. And I think just if they lose game one, it's over instantly. Um, and I do think I got to give the advantage. At the very least, the advantage goes to Houston. And then if that's the case, I do move them along. Moving on this along rather quickly, it's getting rather heated. I think I had this exact same situation when I looked at it before, and I think I did it backwards last time, but either way, um, Baltimore and New York playing against each other, same exact thing happened when I did it in June. One of them was number seed one, and one of them was down here in this bracket. I had them advancing, and I'm still kind of leaning in the same situation. I do think now we're gonna be in a best of five. The Baltimore would have at least blown their two best starters, possibly three, they'd be a little bit tired, and I do think that does Bold well for the New York Yankees to move on to this should say ALCS but it says DS it'll be fixed for the next one so this is the ALCS I do think the Yankees they might win it pretty pretty good maybe six maybe five but I do think the advantage does go to them when we're looking at the ALDS right here I do think that this series will be great it's going to be one of those possible top turning of the ties we got a young team being coached coach managed by Stephen Vogt just been amazing out of the gate been a big surprise this season and then we got the Houston Astros who are basically a dynasty of rotating dynasty almost because they're not exactly the same team that we saw happening a couple like a decade ago half a decade ago but they do still have a lot of those staples the rotation is still pretty lethal this team is very very deep very playoff experienced and I do think that is going to come to show and I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm like setting up just like the most epic rematch between these two teams of all time. But I do think that Houston Astros are going to be able to kind of build the momentum and get to the ALCS. Now, when we get to a best of seven, let me say it to say, I think they will go five with Guardians. Guardians, they don't roll over for nobody. Even when they're down two games to the Twins prior, they came back, split that. So I do think it's going to go five, and again, could go either way. Home field advantage could play a big part as well. Then we get to seven games in the ALCS, and guys, who knows? What's going to happen here? You want to say, I want to lean the Yankees. They got that star power, but at the end of the day, I do think the Astros, just the depth is going to make such a big difference in a best of seven series. We've seen certain slips in the Yankees lineup. The depth isn't quite there. They do have holes. And when we get the deeper into the rotation and such too, they do start to have some issues. We don't see them being the exact powerhouse that we're used to. At the beginning of the season, they've kind of come back down to earth. I do think the Houston Astros are going to come out of the AL. And maybe that's a little crazy. Maybe I'm out to lunch. But guys, this is how I see the AL going. So let's jump into the National League. All right, we are back to the National League side. And guys, the National League was absolutely crazy to go through. There's a lot more teams. I actually had to cut teams that are probably technically in the hunt, but I just don't have time to talk about all these teams. I want to keep this relatively short. But uh, yeah, we're going to jump into it. Even like number one was like super difficult to, to pick. And even now as I'm looking through here, shuffling through here, I'm not super confident in uh, my number one pick. Um, but for me, there's three teams in the National League West that are absolutely playing well. All of them could very well win that division. And to me, whoever does win that division is likely going to be the number one seed. So this kind of goes for you to show, for me to show you that I am predicting a new National League West champion this season. 
And right now, San Diego Padres. Guys, they have been playing absolutely lights out. They're like, what, 14-1 and one over the last 15, something crazy. On top of that, they are a couple of games back from the Dodgers. They got, I think, two and a half. They do have what I find to be somewhat of an easier schedule compared to the other two teams. I think they'll be able to make up those two and a half games easily by doing that. They don't really have much games left against Arizona or the Dodgers. They both only have one series apiece. However, they do come down to the very last series of the season against the Diamondbacks, which could essentially make the difference. Now, when we're kind of looking at that, we got to realize number two seed has to be another division leader. In, in my books, there's only two people that that could possibly be. And for me, it doesn't feel exactly right. It's very different from the other side of the bracket and that the Phillies have been one of those teams that has been struggling. They haven't really shown that they're dominant in terms of playing other team, top caliber teams anymore. But at the same time, they're in one of the softest divisions in the entire MLB. They've built up such a lead. I think it's like eight game lead in their division. And when I look at the Mets, I look at the Braves, I look at those are the only two teams that probably have playoff aspirations at this point. I look at them and they just don't have the firepower, in my opinion, to catch up to the Phillies with such little time left, unless there's a complete fall apart. And in that case, the only real weakness for the Phillies is that maybe they don't get that first round by and they do fall into the three seed. However, I was kind of like looking at it and I do think this is the same boat, like Milwaukee. I do have them as the number three seed. I, there is not really a chance that anyone catches them in that division. We got three teams. I kind of count the Pirates out of it now at this point. They lost, what, 10 in a row? So they're, they're kind of pretty much out of it. They got to hop everyone in their division to get there. Um, but the Brewers have built, again, on a pretty substantial lead in their division. Sure, they've fallen a little bit below 600. You could say the same for all of these teams. But uh, they don't have too much of a tough schedule as well for them. They got nine games of a lead in their division. And they got only one team that's really shown any promise over the past month in the Cincinnati Reds, who are currently on a five-game winning streak. So the Brewers are pretty much a lock for third. I don't really think that they can catch the Phillies, but they are a couple games. It's only a couple of games, so the Phillies do continue to struggle. I, those could swap, and that is where I would leave it up to you to make your own prediction. Right now, I'm just going with the Phillies. So that leaves us to some teams. I'm going to start getting into maybe some teams that aren't going to make it. Um, we'll start with this team. Uh, in the hunt, of course, they're second in the division right now, unless... Don't think Cincinnati has quite passed them yet. But the Cardinals just have too much tough games ahead of them. They have Cincinnati a bunch. They have the Cubs. They have their division games. 500, I don't think, is going to be enough to really secure and keep that wild card spot right now. We do have a couple, in my opinion, of spots that are locked up. Maybe I should have hit those first. Uh, I'll get back to those in a second, maybe. But the Cardinals, it's been a great season. But I just don't think they have the firepower to get themselves in it. And maybe that's where I should go back to talking about number four seed and number five seed, because I think those two are going to be a pretty much lock as to who they are. And maybe the difference is, is who's going to be the home team and who's not. Again, one, four, and five, in my opinion, are all going to be in the National League West. When it comes down to who's going to win number four, I do actually have the Dodgers being the number four seed in this division, I do find that they do have one of the easier schedules of the rest of them. They do play a lot of the central teams. They do play some of the weaker teams in the NL or American League as well. And that does put Arizona at the number five seed. Again, any three of these teams could switch up. They're all so tight, and I think they're all very talented and good enough to go on to the World Series. But... Got to make picks, right? And right now, I do think the Dodgers are going to be able to maybe use that two-and-a-half game lead to a little bit of advantage to keep it over the Dynamax. Again, you got to be reminded, if you watch my power rankings, you do know I have Arizona as the number one team in the power rankings. So that just goes to show with what I think is going to be how the season plays out. Right now, Arizona is the team to beat. They could very easily come into this number one seed. I just got to make picks, right? And that's part of the fun of trying to figure out how the season is going to go. That leaves us down. I got four teams here in one spot. 
So this is where it got really tough. When we start to look at the National League East, which is what I'll do, look at first, we got the Atlanta Braves who are currently holding on that spot. It's been slow and steady falling and slowly falling out of it. They got a little bit of a lead on the, I think it's a four game lead off the people that are hunting them for that last spot. But I don't think that's safe with this Braves team because the Braves do have uh, a lot to go. Like some one of these teams just got to get hot. Um, and is it going to be the Mets? Is it going to be the Braves? It's hard to say. At this point, I am kind of predicting that the Braves are not going to be able to hold on. I said this in the video in June, and they were even first at the time, I think, in the division. I just said they're not going to be able to hold on, and it's slowly been slowly but falling. They even had a pretty solid winning streak in there that kind of caught me off guard and gave me a little bit more hope. But now we're starting to see a little bit of what I expected again happening. So that leaves us with three spots. I'm going to just touch on this team uh, quickly, the San Francisco Giants. They're very much in the hunt. There's 500, and they're in that same boat as all these other teams. But I just being in the West, they have um, do have to play some of these guys, the Padres and the Diamondbacks. They do have the benefit of not having to play the Dodgers, I guess. Uh, and they actually do have somewhat of a beneficial schedule, so I do think they will be able to maintain somewhat 500 baseball. However, the run differential and just the being able to put up runs does have me concerned of being able to be enough to get in the playoffs. So that leaves us down to two teams for that final spot. I got the Mets, I got the Reds, and right now I'm leaning for the Red Hot Reds. Um, the Reds are just been playing some very good baseball. They're one of the hottest teams in the MLB, and. Uh, what else? I gotta pick someone, and I just have a little bit more confidence in this young core than I do the Mets. The Mets did have a hot streak going where they really dug themselves out of a hole that I thought they were in. But the Mets, every time I was kind of looking at these playoffs teams, it seemed like they almost played every single one of these teams on the board, including the American League. So that does hold some weight into what I was deciding. But uh, yeah, I gotta make some picks, and that's what I did. So there you have it. That's who I have making the National League playoffs. It's a little bit interesting, the bracket, how it's shaping up. But uh, I think when it comes down to it, we're having an epic series here. It sucks that it's only a three-game series. That's the one downside to the new playoff format is that this three-game series stuff just isn't the same. But you're going to have to pick. And when it comes down to it, the Dodgers are going to have a couple of their aces. The, some of the concern I've had for the Dodgers and what we've seen over the past few months is that their aces do weren't there like the depth wasn't there in the rotation they'd have wouldn't have five strong but come playoff time they're gonna have their top two guys going for sure is it gonna be Jack Flaherty Kershaw we saw him come back what how this team's gonna look I think they're just gonna be ramping up we're gonna see Mookie Betts we're gonna see Otani we're gonna see Freddie Freeman all these guys their guys are gonna be back and ready to action I think that's gonna play a big part Arizona at the same time they have a solid depth they do have the aces as well to complete this is a coin flip, and I do have to pick someone. So right now, I am actually going to have to pick the Diamondbacks, and that is mainly because I think they're the hottest team, and on my power rankings, I do have them as the highest as well. So in this boat, one's going to play the, the winner of this, so it's kind of interesting. It's the same kind of theory as the American League side. It's almost like you're being punished for being the number one seed because I think you play the better team in the next round, and that's going to make a big deal. Then we get up to three versus six, and it's a three-game series. Realistically, anything can go. We know Cincinnati in the rotation at the top is very strong. Milwaukee, it's not like ace-heavy as much as the Reds are, but of course, Milwaukee has been pretty solid, and they always seem to find a way to win series. Not a whole lot of series you see them lose. I think it's going to make a difference how they play each other down the stretch. That's going to be very impactful. Going to have to make a pick. This time, I just think they have such a lead, it's going to set that up there then we get to milwaukee versus philadelphia in the nlds and just based on what we've seen now i think it's only one way you can go the one benefit philly's gonna have is that they're gonna send out wheeler they're gonna send out nola they're gonna have to not have to use their rested guys so it's gonna make a big difference if milwaukee can get to the number two seed and philadelphia the three seed because i still think this same scenario is going to work out the same way so it would be very detrimental to Philly if they had to use their top of their lineup in the rotation in that first series. Whereas Milwaukee, I don't think it affects it as much. Of course, it's going to affect it a little bit. But I don't think it's as impactful as it would be for Phillies. But at the same time, 
I got to make a pick. I think Milwaukee is going to win this. This is going to be a five-game series. It's going to go the distance, and we're going to see Milwaukee go to the NLCS. Then we get an epic matchup. So if this National League West, just them playing each other, has been fun to watch all season long. We're going to see again. We're going to see these guys end the season playing each other. It's very possible if the Dodgers get number one seed, they're going to play each other here instead. So, like, you know how it goes, right? And then the same kind of story. So when we get to a five-game set, we're going to have Arizona down their first two starters. But their bats could potentially be hot from the, from the start off. It's always the concern is that when you get the little bit of a break, will your bats happen? Getting the home field advantage, I think San Diego, the slam Diego, are they back? I do think they are going to find their way through this. San Diego is going to be that team to beat in that league. And I think they're going to go five. It's going to be a big series too. So we're going to have two five-game series. This NL, I think once you get to the final four here, it's going to be epic. Just can't wait for MLB playoff season to start. Then we get to the championship and it's the best of seven and coming into this season i don't think i picked these two teams to make it this far i think when i did the video in june i had san diego missing they might have been in the hunt but i definitely don't think i had them in the playoffs i know i had arizona in there but at the time i don't think i had san diego but now we have them making it to the nlcs just based on what we've been seeing lately maybe it's a stretch uh this nl side seems like a stretch when you have the dodgers at the first round the phillies out and you got two teams here but when we get to a best of seven, we got teams that, in my opinion, are very streaky in the San Diego Padres. Milwaukee, on the other hand, has been super consistent all season long. You haven't really seen them string together super losing streaks. Padres, you've seen it, but now we're starting to see a very hot Padres team. It's only been win streaks as of late. I think by the time the playoffs come, we're, we're gonna, they're going to come back down to earth a little bit. They obviously can't keep that kind of record going. And I think at that rate... This is my, this feels crazy. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't have this planned out who I was going to pick. When I do these videos, I kind of always just go by the feel of my pants, my, the seat of my pants or whatever. But I do have the Milwaukee Brewers winning in six to go to the World Series. So then we're going to add World Series up here. And as you guys know, I did pick the Astros at the time to be the World Series champions or to the American League champions. And on top of that, I might have just given away, but I do think that they are also going to be the World Series champions. Now, the Brewers, I think the American League overall is the stronger team. Whoever gets in there, I think they do have the advantage. At the same time, of course, all these guys are, it's baseball, anything can happen, but we got to make a pick. I do think the Astros win in six. They do, just in my opinion, have overall depth of offense, depth of pitching, a little bit more of a bullpen as well than the Brewers. This is crazy. I didn't come into this video expecting I'd be picking the Astros to win the World Series. I didn't expect at all I'd be picking the Brewers to win the National League, and maybe that's absolutely crazy. But at the same time, guys, the Brewers are pretty much a lock to get into the playoffs. And once you're in the playoffs, all you can do is play your baseball. And I think the Brewers have been one of the most consistent teams all season long. Whereas if you just eliminate the first two months for the Astros, they're probably one of the best records of all of the MLB since then. So guys, there you have it. There's my playoff predictions for August 2024 coming up six weeks from now. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys agree with, disagree with, and et cetera, et cetera. And guys, we will see you out there for that next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.